a Pi 3B Plus Game Boy that can play them all. Hey, I'm Adam and today we're gonna build a Pi 3B Plus Game Boy with an analog PS Vita joystick that can run all your emulators and games you play on your Pi 3B Plus console into a handheld one. We will go through a lot of steps briefly as I already have 3 videos on the subject. But the only thing that will be different here will be the use of a Pi 3B Plus. Speaking of which, I already modified mine. The USB and the Ethernet port will need to be removed. Make sure that you don't scratch any traces while you do that. 5mm from the USB hub side were also removed, as the Pi 3B Plus doesn't fit inside the case without modification. The top corners will need to be removed with a Dremel and the GPIO pins are to be trimmed as well, so we make it as slim as we possibly can. It's not that hard to do and you don't need any soldering skills. Get a clamp, take your time and be as precise as you can. For our bottom PCB, I went with Tinkerboy V3. You can't go wrong with this one. This proved reliable and is inside each one of my builds. This goes well with Tinkerboy DPIO adapter. It just sits under our Pi, being soldered on all 40 GPIO pins. This will provide us with a fast way of connecting the screen to our Raspberry Pi, being faster than any SPI screens that I have tested. You will also have 5 spare GPIO pins labeled on the side of it, which are free to use for whatever you choose. To complete the build a lot faster and make it a bit easier, we will use 8-bit customs extended backboard PCB. This one has support for up to 4 buttons, too big and too small, power switch, micro USB power in, the volume wheel pins, volume wheel and female USB. You also get an extra front button stencil that can help you drill the holes perfectly and a special button that can be used as brightness control with the right display. If you don't want to have all that on one board, we made a simple one as well that has support just for 4 buttons. Mounting is done with the original screws, no hot glue needed. These are developed by Sergio and me and you can find them in my shop. Next on my list is a good joystick. First, I plan to use a Switch joystick, but some unfortunate series of events made me choose PS Vita ones. These are quite nice, last longer than the Switch ones, and compared with the PSP rockers is a night and day difference. To mount this into your case, you will need a 5-pin FTPC connector PCB. You can find this on eBay or AliExpress. A link will be in the video description. The ribbon cable slides into the connector like so, giving us the possibility to use this with any bottom PCB that supports joysticks. And last but not least is the speaker. This is arguably the best speaker around. With an impedance of 8 ohms and 2 watts, the volume and the quality is top notch. Let's not forget about the case. If you want to check out how to modify that, check out the video in the right top corner or check out 8bitcustoms.com for an already modified case. These tend to go quickly as I'm not making a lot of them. So for this video, we will use the power of editing to modify the case and it's already done. From buttons, joystick, left and right trigger buttons holes are done. The cartridge is modified and fixed in place so we can use the most of the space inside the case. Battery bay is also modified and the battery added. The battery is a 5000mAh Bluetech one. Links will be in the description. On the inside, I already added a 3D printed bracket, display and speaker. The micro USB cutout and the screen lens is also added. If that is too much info too quick, you can go to this video where I go more into this mod. So let's get started. First, let's add the button. These normal GMB ones are sinking into the case while pressed, so to fix that, add a piece of the D-pad rubber into the bottom well. This will make them feel a lot better and raise them up a bit. You don't need these razors with the SNES buttons as those are already raised. For a 6 button layout, you will need 3 silicone pads. Place the bottom ones as so and at the top one, cut a small amount from the upper part so it will fit perfectly while closed. We need to mount the joystick now so we can mount the bottom PCB inside the case. So slide the ribbon cable through this hole, or better, have it coming from the side of the case. Just pop it in place carefully, and we are ready to screw the PCB down. The joystick held in place just by pressure, but it's good to have a dub of glue, so it stays there. 
Once done, it should look something like this. The helping PCB will come nicely on the side of the bottom board. Next, we can go to our DPI adapter. Cover this with some captain or electrical tape. This will ensure that we don't have any risks or shorts. Cut the tape with an X-Acto knife. With the DPI and Pi 3 prepared, let's bring them together. To make sure that you got a flush fit, use two clamps to hold the two bores together while you solder all 40 pins. Here, please take your time. Don't rush through, as if this is not done properly, you will not have an image on the screen or worse. Once it's finished, it should look something like this. No cold solder joints and no blobs. Now, let's make a test fit. Carefully connect the display ribbon cable into our DPI adapter and place it on top of the display. As you can see, everything should fit perfectly. Once we know everything is fine, let's start wiring it up. We need power for both our DPI and Pi. So let's start preparing four 24 gauge cables by thinning them. And solder one set on the Pi power in pins as so. Top pin is negative and the bottom positive. Don't mix these if you don't want a $60 brick. Solder the other two on the DPI adapter also and we are done with wiring it. This can go directly in the case, finishing our front part of the build. Now let's go on to the back. Here I already added a Quad TP4056 LiPo charger and a 3 amps booster. This charging booster circuit is quite powerful. It will power your Pi 3B Plus and even a Pi 4 for that matter. On the back of the battery bay, you can see that I made the speaker circle cutout. And also, I lowered the cartridge support so my backboard will fit perfectly. Speaking of which, let's get it prepared. It comes with the button stencils attached, so with a salt blade or a clamp, just cut the two holding posts that hold the two together. Leaving us with just our backboard, ready for all our components to go on it. We will start with the micro USB power in connector. This is the trickiest solder job on the board, but don't worry, if you plan on using this board, it does come with a micro USB solder naked board or fully soldered. Once soldered, it should look something like this. A good practice is to check with a multimeter after every component soldered, as it's a lot easier to fix at this stage rather than later on when it's already mounted inside. Check it with the power plugged in. And that was it for our micro USB. We can go to our switch. We will have to clip the four legs with a clipper or a clamp. Once done, you should have just the 6 pins sticking out of it. Add this in its place and solder it down. Once done, clip flush the pins and we got the switch in place. Next on our list is the volume wheel. You can use either a 3 pin or a 5 pin volume wheel. To use the 3 pin one, you need to jumper these two pads together. Place it on its holes and just solder it down. And that was our volume wheel. Next is our USB port. Solder this one down and let's make a test fit to see if it all goes in place just right. And it does. All aligned just perfectly. The last part to add is our buttons. Insert them in the PCB and add the plastic cups so we can try the feel of the buttons and the fit. If you are happy, let's go forward and solder the two buttons here. Make sure that the buttons are flush with the PCB so you don't have the buttons misaligned. With them in place, check the connection with the multimeter on continuity to make it sure it does work perfectly. When you press the button, the connection should be done. And that is it with the extended back PCB. The top button can be used with HDMI screens that have brightness control so you can route the button on the top like so. Next thing will be to wire the power connection to it. But first, check again if it fits perfectly and that the buttons are flushed. So let's get started to add the switch plastic cover in its place and let's solder the power in cables to our PCB. Route the cables through the bottom so we have a clean build. Give it a try to make sure that the charging circuit works and we can go forward. Next is the switch. 
We will need to connect just the positive or the negative cable that comes from the booster, in my case I choose the positive, and add a second cable long enough to get the V3 button PCB. All remained is the negative cable that comes from the booster to the V3. And we are done. We can now screw the back PCB with the four buttons and that was it with the back part of the Game Boy. Now all that is remained is to wire all the connections from the back part of the Game Boy with the front part like per this diagram. For these connections you can use 26 gauge wires as they are thinner and more flexible. Take them one by one and you will be done in no time. Once you've done these connections, just screw it down and we finished our Pi 3B Plus Game Boy. All parts are aligned perfectly and all tied together nicely. The joystick is my favorite add-on to the build, as for the Pi 3B Plus, I'm still debating if it's a major improvement over Pi 3A Plus. I added a heatsink on the Pi, but it's a small place and thermal throttling is still happening after 3 or 4 hours of play. So a larger heatsink or a fan can do the trick and cool it. Until then, this build plays amazing any game that I threw at it. It just ran through N64, PS1, even PSP games run perfectly. I find myself playing on this while I'm at home and on the way I use my GPI A+. I hope you find this video useful and if you are here until now, please subscribe and share. My name is Adam and I will see you in the next one.